Hello and welcome to the web series, Zero PM Pieces. In the Zero PM Pieces, the researchers in the project will tell you about one piece of the Zero PM puzzle that they're working on. So without further ado, here comes a Zero PM piece. Yeah, uh, many thanks for the organization. Uh, and I'm really happy to share some of the uh, our work, uh, the work that we are doing on the use categories. So my kind of the uh, title will be understanding the use categories of chemicals, the opportunities and the current challenges. So I'm uh, my name is Jiayun Huang. I'm from Empath with Federal Laboratories for Material Science and Technology. Um, I will start my presentation like yeah, this is just go going through, quickly going through the, the the general or the generic chemicals assessment frameworks. I think. Uh, uh, in the previous piece, so we have all already heard a bit that uh, in order to understand the risk of chemicals, we need to understand both the hazards, uh, like in terms of what kind of adverse effect a chemical can cause, and then also understanding, um, we also need to understand the exposure, like does a chemical reach the environment uh, or humans, and in which quantities? So that's the general idea, uh, and uh, so like the, 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 there are different work packages uh, within the zero PM, also diff uh, dealing with the hazards and the effects sites. Uh, and uh, in the work package five, we are also looking to a bit looking to uh, the exposure, particularly in terms of the prioritization of the, the uh, potential zero. Uh, PMT and VPVM substances, which I will also talk a little bit about uh, later. Uh, and so, so the yeah, for us, the interesting part here is to understand uh, exposure um, and particularly really to understand kind of the release, uh, like the release potential and the quantities. So in order to understand the release, we need to look at a link to the life cycle of chemicals. So it starts uh, from the extraction to production to consumption and to the waste or end of life treatment stage. Uh, this is a very simplistic view or simplified view. And like what we can from this view, what we can see is that like generally from like the extraction, the production, waste stage is normally uh, like these point sources that need to be categorized, but uh, the, the release during the use phase can be much more complex. And this is often the challenges in, in order to understand the release of the chemicals. Um, and so in order to uh, know the releases, from the use phase, we need to understand how, how the chemicals are being used. Uh, and then we can conduct the different uh, uh, ways to estimate uh, the exposure, like uh, from the uh, like very simple ones, like develop a kind of exposure index uh, as proposed by the Stockholm University and the Swedish Chemicals Agency before or like to do much more detailed exposure assessments. Uh, understanding the uses of chemicals can also help to, in many uh, other parts of the kind of chemicals assessment and management, also in other parts of the zero PM project. For example, like knowing the uses, it can really help to uh, implement the concept of essential use. Uh, the idea of the concept is that uh, the concept is to like distinguish the different uses uh, of a, a given chemical, so that like really face out those are not essential ones uh, and uh, develop alternatives for those are currently essential ones. Um, and I really like this kind of the example set uh, was. Uh, down in, in Ian's group, they're looking to the different textiles and how uh, PFAS and polyfluoroalkyl substances are used uh, in the different types of PFAS, uh, textile products, uh, looking to the functions. 
uh, and the, what they can conclude is that for kind of the leisure out where uh, the, the use of PFAS is not really uh, needed necessary for safety or uh, health or the, the functioning of society. Therefore, this the PFAS use in uh, leisure out where will be categorized as kind of the non-essential ones. They're also having a, uh, like examples by the King Food where they said that they could uh, eliminate nearly 70% of the PFAS uh, without making any changes. That means uh, like they understood PFAS did not really have a very uh, like a uh, uh, important or necessary function or use like in the uh, some the products. And then the second is to understand like uh, what like in these examples they could see that uh, in some of these outdoor apparels or seafarers, uh, they would need uh, this PFAS for the like the water repellency, but this can be replaced by uh, uh, understanding of, uh, by other non-fluorinated alternatives. So this understanding the function can help to uh, search for the alternatives. Uh, and then the third category is, is like with very high performance requirements. And then this is where the innovation is needed. So this understanding the uses can really help us to better manage the chemicals as well and identify it, uh, uh, the understanding the uses can also help us to identify the uh, substitutions. So for example, like uh, just looking at the chemical functions, maybe it can help us to identify uh, very different uh, chemicals that can fulfill the same function, uh, fulfill the same uses, so that's uh, like to get rid of the hazard chemicals. Of course, uh, can uh, with understanding uses can also um, looking to more like the end use functions uh, or the fu function as a service. Uh, this has been really all very well summarized uh, by Joe uh, Tickner in uh, his papers about the functional substitution. Um, so in some cases, it is it is easy to get the use information and to understand the releases, etc. Uh, like for example, uh, we have the the the. EU has a pesticide database, so it really like we know the chemicals on this list. They're used as pesticides, so they will have the field uses and the releases. Similarly, we also have this already databases of uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, so with and uh, like for these chemicals, we know that there will be uh, ex excretion and problem uh, like releases. Uh, from the kind of the, the releasing to the waterways. Uh, but in some other cases, it may, may, it's not that simple. So here also I found some really interesting examples. So this is kind of the data reported by chemical industry to uh, the, the US EPA. In this case, we do know kind of what kind of uh, the, how the chemicals are being used. Uh, like uh, like uh, this uh, use as a finishing agent in the this uh, the textile industry uh, and it's kind of the, what kind of types of process and the uses. But in this case, we don't know what chemicals they are using, so this is not really very helpful. Uh, and then in some other cases, we do know what kind of chemicals they are using, but all the use information has been claimed confidential business information. So therefore, we cannot really use this reported use information in both cases. Uh, and apart from this, the, the confidential business information, and sometimes we just have too many uh, use data available, like reported by different people uh, and the different formats with different terminologies. So this is also very, uh, can be very confusing. So here is kind of like a, this is a triphenyl phosphate. It's very common usually like used as antioxidant stabilizers uh, and like process regulators in the synthetic rubber manufacturing. Uh, but then like when it's reported uh, in the EU, it used kind of what is 
in this case, it's quite similar language, but there's still there's some uh, quite you, yeah different ways of formulation. It also kind of creates a little bit trouble to like uh, like to automatize the 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 process. Currently, we may need to like really look uh, look into all the data reported uh, manually. Um, and yeah, and also sometimes uh, like they can be reported a lot. And uh, like in this case, the the they are reported in uh, for the the under the Spain database. And uh, the, again, it use a little bit different ways of describing the uses. Uh, and it has a lot of different information, so it is, can be quite complex uh, really to digest and distill all this information into a kind of a, a useful or usable workflow. So trying to tackle these issues, so uh, like the, the OECD has developed a kind of an internationally uh, harmonized functional product and article use categories. Uh, kind of it compiles all the categories that have been used by the uh, US EPA uh, from the literature, uh, the SPIN database, from the ECA, etc., and from Japan. And then it kind of divided in to like harmonize them into like 100 or, uh, and seven uh, functional use categories, and they also provide the respective definitions. Uh, like uh, for for the functional use categories, they refer to like UV stabilizers or traces, and they also look into like 91 product use categories and 69 article use categories. So the difference between the product categories and the use article categories. It's more like the article is always solid, have a form, and the product can be uh, the mixtures or the preparations. So they do provide this very useful kind of harmonize the use categories, uh, but unfortunately, kind of the implementation is still rather an issue. So uh, as I show the previous, this the five. Uh, Finu force fight this case. Uh, the, 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 this data, some of this data are reported after the the OECD has developed this the categories, but apparently they're not really being implemented at moments. Uh, and there's also not a kind of no kind of uh, not addiction help you to translate existing reportings uh, into these categories. So this is actually uh, uh, still a major issue right now, uh, and this is what kind of we would like to try to work a bit on that uh, within the zero PM. So it's kind of always kind of uh, currently uh, with the uh, University of Luxembourg and the NGI to develop these global chemical inventories. We would like to include as much uh, data information on the production and the use as possible. And then this information will hope to really to harmonize it and also to uh, create some automated workflow so that this can help to inform uh, when looking for uh, the release potential of the substances uh, to from the use categories and also help to inform when uh, like searching for alternatives to a certain chemical of concern to inform the other packages. So uh, I think this is more or less what I would like to present today. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, really also we have just started this work and all, any feedbacks and inputs are more than welcome. Uh, and I would really like to acknowledge the funding from the, uh, the European uh, Union's Horizon 2020 program. Uh, and many thanks for the NGI for the coordination. Thank you so much. Zero PM. Zero Pollution of Persistent and Mobile Substances. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme under Grant Agreement Number 10103675.